Okay, guys. So let's start. Set core artificial intelligence. We we'll start just start talk about AI. It's something very cool, very new that uh, I'm enjoying to play with. And well, let's talk a little bit about me. I'm Brazilian, and uh, I've been set core space for some time, almost ten years, working with set core. And uh, I'm set core MVP, been awarded a few times as well. I also have set core uh, content hub certification, set core eight, set core nine, set core ten, and uh, well, I have my own blog, my personal blog that I try to to share some information, some insights, or some resolution to problems that eventually we all face, like developers, marketers, content authors. So I'll try to bring to give back some of knowledge to the community as well. We all use the community to learn a lot, so it's a really good way to, to give it back. Also, I've been part of the Set Core Community Mentor Program. Uh, this try to help the, the MVP aspirants to you know, feel their dream to become an MVP. And uh, also a member of Go Horse team. And uh, if you don't know what the hackathon is, I have a, a slide just dedicated for that, and I'd like to start talking about Sidecore Hackathon. So Sidecore Hackathon, it is an event that we have every year. And uh, in this event, we have a lot of developers, architects, and everyone gathers together from all around the world and they try to create a new solution. What kind of solution? Well, something very new, something that it is totally high tech, right? So every year we have like a few subjects to explore and uh, every year is a different subject uh, with something completely new. And uh, all those developers, all those architects, they try to create something new, some program in less than 24 hours. It is usually three in the team and uh, we've been participating in this tournament, I would say, for the last uh, eight years. Our team, it's well known as the Go Horse team. The Go Horse team won twice. And uh, this year, it was me, Jose Neto. You can see Anderson Fortales as well. And uh, on the right of the image, Rodrigo Peplau. So this year, we had a few categories. I mean, just two, actually. In the past, we have more categories, four, five. And, uh, but this year, well, AI was the topic of the moment, and everyone is talking about AI. Of course, this would be the, the main subject, uh, one of the categories of the, of the event. And, uh, well, the first category was best use of AI, and uh, you need to develop something with AI, right? And the second would be the best like, generic model for site core that would also include XM Cloud. So it could, it could be compatible with XM Cloud or not, or usually you try to uh, create something that will fit all set core as well. So there are those two categories that we could create some something. And uh, this event, we chose AI. We are thinking that AI would be the one of the categories. So we said, oh, AI will come. So if it comes there, let's let's grab this category. And when I saw the category as well, we we said, oh, we need to 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 do AI because we already did so many models for set core in the last years. And well, let's try to do AI and let's see how far we can go. Right, it's 24 hours. You have to sleep. It's tough. It is not just a uh, physical, but mentally tiring uh, tournament. And it very fun, very fun as well, and eventually create something very cool. And uh, we were able to create one AI chat assistance for set core users. So we create something with set we, we, that connects, that brings set core with AI. And uh, you can you have your like chatbot there. You can select any component that you see in set core in a normal set core or set core exam cloud, and you can interact and ask about that. And uh, it helps more, I would say, the target of this is uh, more content authors. And uh, it helps you to, to learn about the tool, understand set core as a whole. And even, uh, even I saw some people using our tool, 
and uh, you know exploring and uh, learning more about set core there are a lot of hidden buttons there hidden features that sometimes as a developers or architects we don't use but content authors may, may be more aware of that or vice versa so it is really cool and uh, it is available on chrome store so is it you're, you can download and install and test as well so talk about the, the set core hackathon I would say it was my first experience with AI in the development. And uh, well, check, there's every year we de deliver something. And uh, if you can check the repository of, of the hackathon, we did so much interesting stuff and uh, other teams as well. So, oh, anyway, it's very cool. So let's talk a little bit about AI. So, well, AI is here and uh, we have AI tools and uh, well, what what is the problem I would say with AI? What is the challenge with AI? We need to use AI to bring value to to the CMS. So here we have a few tools available for us, and you need to find a way to connect those tools and bring value for the users, bring value for the marketers, right? So we have our platform it is Centcore. We have search tools as well. We have Coveo or Elasticsearch. And uh, well, we have we, we have ChatGPT as our model, and uh, ChatGPT is the one that we are starting playing with. Everyone is starting that. However, we have uh, the Meta Llama tree as well. It is an open source. It's made by Meta, the affiliate company from like Facebook company. So it's a model as well. Pretty much works like ChatGPT, but it is open source. So there's uh, some advantages as well so uh let's oops that's that's our challenge we have set core in, on the left you have in the middle some database we have a knowledge database and that we have a chat gpt and lemma tree so the first thing that we did was directly connect set core to chat gpt that was that is what we did in hackathon so we, we create try to use this connection direct set core to chat GPT to try to bring some value. So we are able to do that. But now we have more tools to integrate and uh, what can you do with that? So we do have search, so have less search or Coveo. And uh, in those databases, what we, we have there? We have a knowledge base. So let's say that you have, a, let's say a, a pizzeria right you have a restaurant and you have like hundreds of thousands of recipes on that knowledge database right that's that's basically it's your own recipes just you hold those secret recipes those secret sauces that you do to the pizza and no one knows that right so we have thousands of files here that it is internal to your company right and uh well if you if you try to to make it if you don't use that knowledge base if you just make questions directly to the model the model is trained on inter on the things that they found on the internet for instance right so there is a i would say a limitation on the model there is a, a, a there's a, a date that this model is cut from the internet and basically that's it he can say have let's say whole internet but the the model don't have your files and the fi and your files your secret sources are just there with you. So by having that, if you make questions, if your user starts to make questions directly to the model, to ChatGPT or to Lama3, they won't get exactly what they want. They won't. They might get something similar that's available on the internet. However, they won't be relying on the knowledge database. And how can you connect this and uh, you know bring value to you? So you need to integrate this knowledge database. By integrating the knowledge database and using this as a context to ChatGPT, you're going to get a much better tailored answer for you. So that's the thing. So this thing that I'm saying is a new concept that I will introduce to you. If you don't know about it, it is REC, so Retrieval Augmented Generation. So what is REC? Let's give an overview of REC. So it will help you to get a better response using the relevant data that you have right so how reg works you're going to have your retrieval phase first thing we're going to have a database we have a lot of documents and we're going to try to get all those relevant documents once you have 
those all those relevant documents in your hands, you have the other phase, which is the augmentation phase. Once you have those documents, you're gonna pass those documents, all this information, all those sources that you have on your uh, on your, your database, your knowledge database, and you're gonna send that to the generative model. And now you, you have the combination, you have the combined information from your knowledge database plus the chat GPT plus the model. And combining those two things, right? So you're gonna have what we call the context awareness. So the chat GPT is able, or the model is able to, to give you a better answer because he knows the context, he knows more information what we're talking about it. And also I'll talk just a little bit about uh, scalability here. So as I just said, the model has a date, let's say they created the model until July. And after that date, every file that you create on, on your knowledge base, even if you train this model on your files, they will be outdated very quickly. So it is a very scalable solution as well, because once you start to create more files, those files will still be uh, reused in the generative process as well. So we can have like a gigantic database and uh, this will be used in part of the, of the process. So by saying all that, here we have an example of how this would work, right? So on the left, you have that, that uh, user connected to, let's say, to a search tool, to your website. And your website has a, a search, as most of the websites have. So you make, you make like, a, oh, I want to identify all the clients that I have in my files, or let's say I want to find all the recipes that have tomato, right? So if I type that tomato, it's going to, let's say, look to all my million files in, in, and uh, you're going to find the relevant files that, that contain the tomato. It's going to get all the recipes that contain th this information that you're looking for. And then it's going to pass that as a context to my trained model. So here we have the two phases, which is the retrieval phase in the query, and the query will make to the database to get the, the, the relevant files. And then again, we have the augmentation phase. And the augmentation phase, it is this phase where you're gonna pass the files as a context to your model. So the reg is, is a technique, right, that you, you do, I'll say, integrating uh, all those tools and uh, you're gonna increase the productivity of the GPT. Of course, you have, we say, oh, it's very productive GPT already. Yes, it is, but we, we still can do much more uh, using this technique as well. So here we, we can, I'm not say compare, but talk about two search tools, right? We have other search tools as, as well. We have like Sitecore Search, but here I will focus on Covail and Elasticsearch. So Covail, well, the files are already, I mean, if you have a scenario, we have the scenario that we have the files already in Covail, right? If you have the files already in Covail, you can use Covail. It's a great uh, search tool as well. And uh, Covail also supports semantic search. But of course, you need to uh, probably pay a little bit more if you don't have this license. And one thing that's new in Covail, they are working pretty hard to, to create new AI solutions, integrate to their tool. They're developing an, uh, an API with, that you, you help you to develop your own uh, rank. So this, they are developing this and uh, probably be available at the end of this year uh, for, for all the customers. And as, as a, any search tool, you have the normal API as well that's available and you can make a call to that. Well, uh, Elasticsearch is a great tool, uh, uh, like Covail as well. Uh, if you don't have, the, if you don't have let, let's say, on, on your client Elasticsearch, uh, or if you plan to uh, put Elasticsearch, Elasticsearch is a great tool as well. It can connect really easy and start to index everything pretty fast. Let's say you have SharePoint site, there is a connector to SharePoint. You just have to point the SharePoint. It's going to go there and index everything in SharePoint. If you have a Google Drive, you want to connect to Elasticsearch as well. You can easily connect to Google Drive. And if you have any, let's say, another website on your company that you want to, uh, it, that you want to connect to Elasticsearch, it's, very, it's like plug and play. It's, uh, it's a great tool. And uh, the solutions with AI as well, they are creating a lot of things 
uh, with AI. That's uh, amazing. So as well as any last, uh, as any other search tool, they also provides an API endpoint for performance search. So you're gonna pass a few parameters and also you're gonna retrieve the information. Uh, I could vary, it provides you the semantic search. So this feature is available and there are a lot of uh, different products inside the last search, like different features and with small nu different nuances that uh, you can implement with uh, last search. So also, all those new features, it might impact you having an additional cost. So talk about a little bit about search tools and uh, how this will play in the future of search, right? So, but let's resume some concepts as well. So let's talk about the lexical search. What's the, what does that mean, lexical search? So lexical search is a traditional search. It is a search that you've already been using for years. Basically, it's an exact match it relies on find exact what you're looking for. You have the keyword dependency. You're gonna type something. It's gonna find that word for you in the database. It is very, it's gonna provide you faster results. It is generally faster. It's straightforward as well. It's a simple technology. It's been there for a long time as well. A limited context understanding. So it does not understand what you're saying. It does not interpret what you're saying or the context of that, right? So uh, no synonymous handling. I mean, if you, you can develop, I mean, I did that in the past. I developed a synonymous handling for this kind of search. So, and I saw a lot of implementations in this direction as well, but usually uh, it doesn't come automatically for you. Also, it's a static response will not adapt to the user behavior. It doesn't learn from the user, right? It just gets what you type in there, search, and uh, basically that's it. Well, now we well, the search tools are evolving a lot. Oveo is evolving. Elasticsearch is evolving a lot. Sitecore search will evolve, is evolving as well. So they're changing and they, they have more features. And uh, well, one of the features they have too is like semantic search. So I would say it's beyond keywords. So one, it will interpret that meaning. Basically, you understand what you're trying to say. Also, contextual re relevance. So we are just talk about uh, context, right? In the in the in the rag. So it tries to analyze the words that we're saying. So you can write a phrase to give context of what we're trying to say, and this you understand it and try to to give you the uh, a better response. Synonymous handling as well, since it understands what we're saying, it's also is able already to identify uh, variations of the language synonymous, right? So language uh, understanding. Uh, well, I would say here, proved user experience. So it will deliver, it's going to deliver you more intuitive searches. So this, I think this improved user experience is what will change a lot. Once we, we start to have this in the, in the websites, we we'll probably need to get used to that before. And uh, once you get used to that, I would say the chat GPT, uh, you know, way of grab information, right? Well, technology independent, it, 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 uh, it needs and relies on machine learning AI technologies as well. So you do have AI behind the scenes in the search tools now. And that continues learn. So it learns from your interactions. So every time you type something, the users are searching things. They're able to learn. You have machine learning there. You have AI connected to the search. So it's it, it's much better. And of course, we're gonna use that in various fields here, like healthcare, law, customer service. So we'll talk about some experience that I had with uh, ChatGPT and uh, Llama 3. When we talk about AI, we always will talk about ChatGPT. It's, I would say, the, the most famous one, but we cannot ignore some uh, other models that we have. We have the Meta Llama 3. And uh, well, we have Lama 3.1 that was just released uh, in July. And, uh, and uh, well, it is, the difference here is an open source AI model, which basically you can download on, on your computer. Of course, you need to have a very good computer to run that, or if you just want to play, you can install that and uh, play around. Well, ChatGPT is paid, uh, Lama, it is free. 
However, if you want to have a hosted Llama tree, you probably need to pay for the infrastructure. And uh, I would recommend you to use the like Amazon uh, Bedrock. So the Amazon Bedrock is there is like a set of AI tools, and uh, you have Llama tree dot one available there as well now. So you can uh, you have the I would say having the AWS the Amazon hosting your model for you there and then uh, in this way you can have the infrastructure being taken care of you you don't I mean you won't need to worry about that well if you want to play a little bit and uh, if you want to cre create start to you know have an experience let's say as a developer uh, with AI you can have, let's say, LM Studio on your computer, or you can have the Llama. LM Studio is a great tool. It's basically a very user-friendly interface. You download this on your computer, and uh, it's very visual uh, with buttons and tabs. And uh, for a developer, it's I mean, you can you can uh, create a, a local server, which means that you can create your code and make calls to your own API. Right. Instead of making calls to ChatGPT, you have the server on your computer, and uh, this server will receive, let's say, Postman calls, or uh, you can develop a C# -sharp code that makes posts to that model, and uh, and well, you can also you can load a lot of open source models on 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 LM Studio. You can you can have the Llama, Llama 2, Llama 3, and others. There is for Microsoft as well, and other. Uh, Companies creating their open source models that you can load into the LM Studio and uh, and uh, play with. So it's very cool. Also, we have Llama. Llama is very similar to the to the LM Studio. Uh, however, it is a command line interface, which makes it more dif difficult to have to read. I would say uh, the documentation, try to test the co those commands, you have to memorize or write down in a separate uh, file so you can remember. So, but I mean, it, it still we can do the same thing, and uh, I mean, the perf I test the performance between the two of them in different machines. Their the performance was pretty similar because the models that you download are basically the same. So you have to download an open source model. You're gonna run here, and uh, you can play with that. So it's a great way to to play local as well, or to try to understand how those things work. So I'll talk about the ChatGPT, uh, ChatGPT4, ChatGPT4. I mean, we had ChatGPT a few months ago. We had the 3.5. Now we had the ChatGPT4, and now we are going. Uh, I think uh, to maybe to the end of the year, they will be releasing the, the GPT5. I try to make a quick comparison between the 3.5 and 4. In the day of launch of or I received the, the notification or the email, and uh, I just when I downloaded ChatGPT4 at the same time, and uh, it was I mean a great experience. First thing you tried to do was try to use the voice interaction, and I, I was trying to see if if I mean they can translate right. I said, well maybe ChatGPT because I download the app on my phone, maybe they can just translate, and I start to ask for translating things for me. And it was like a real-time translation. That's like great, and uh, I, I was very happy because I mean I, I live in a country where I don't speak the language, and uh, having this as a tool for me, it helps me to do like my daily activities, right? So when I live in a country that you cannot like communicate very well, I mean I I use this as my like a survival tool to translate to me to put an audio or to create a really good uh, translation of what I need and like show the phone to the person like I need this, right? So it is part of my daily usage uh, actually. So it's going to, not just me, but it's going to probably enable a lot of people in the same situation as well. So the other the other thing that I really liked is the, the real-time browsing. What is that? So GPT 3.5 basically Everything that you ask in the TPT 3.5, it's used in the model. And if you cannot find in that model, it will try to generate something for you, right? Or it's going to give you a very limited answer. However, the GPT-4, it goes beyond their own knowledge. So the, we have the 
let's say, the box of the knowledge of the model, right? And now this can connect to the internet. So that's incredible. Basically, you have the GPT, even let's say in your machine, or it doesn't matter where, you make a question to this, to, to this, uh, to this model, it gives you an answer, and if you cannot make an answer, or if you think it's not enough for you, you can say, please go to the internet and, and look for the answer for me. So it's gonna browse the internet, find pages, it's gonna find those pages, extract that information, like in re real time and give you an answer. So this is like incredible. And uh, for me, this was like another, I would say almost life changing too, because now basically they can, I mean, you, you, you can go to the Google and make research or you can go to the GPT, uh, make a search for you and it's not going to do the search, it's going to compile information and summarize information and, and give in a way that you want to be displayed. So it saves you a lot of time as well. So that's the great thing great things in the GPT-4 only, and uh, it's a great tool. And uh, well, looking forward to seeing the GPT-5. Well, in this challenge that we, I would say, uh, we face of creating the rank, uh, we also thought, well, you know, what if we can create our own model? Maybe we, we have all this knowledge database, why, well, why can't you just try to create our 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 model based on our files, and then you gonna just you know post the questions to your files basically, right? And then comes the problems to do that. Uh, well, we have you must have the, the data quality and quantity like high quality data to do that, and not just the data, but usually must uh, be a structured data that can uh, help you, let's say, in a chatbot scenario. It also takes a lot of uh, computing resources to train that. So to run a training, it uses a lot of computing. Then you need to use probably AWS or Azure to do this uh, training for you. You need to incur costs as well. And also the scaling, the thing is, was more, for, I mean, the biggest problem for me was the, the scaling issue as well. Even if you train all the, the all the model based on your files. In the next day, your user will upload a new file. You, you have a new pizza with a this secret sauce as well. And again, uh, your model is already outdated. So that's why the reg solution comes uh, in, in, into our help and try to leverage the your database to, to use that. So here we have a few scenarios that we try to bring value to the to the users. So here we have like a search results page. And uh, the idea here, we do have, let's say a PDF file here, and uh, we can connect the, the, the model with the file. Remember that we're saying to pass the file as a context. And here is a great example of that. Here we have a search results. We have one to 50, and, but whoever have this PDF, that specific PDF, that they want to, let's say, summarize this document for me. They want to, there's like 200 pages on that. I don't know. They just want to have like the first page or just something, you know. And uh, you can just chat with the document. And here is a really example of using the right technique. So you are passing the, the PDF as a context to the, to the, to the chat. And uh, then you're going to make your question. Right, so in this way, you're using the model from ChatGPT or Lama Tree, and you're using your own knowledge database. So here we have another example that will say chat with the favorites. So here is not here not talking about files, but I'm talking about pages. So you usually have a lot of important pages on your website, and uh, you can have a feature of let's say favorites pages that user can select, and uh, you can compare or summarize those pages for you and this way you can use those pages now we're not talking about pdfs but set core pages that you can pass as a relevant context as well again i'm talking about context context awareness so i'm passing the the the, the context to the reg to, to to the to the model and uh, to try to to leverage the information that i have in my company into the model combine these two the two sources of knowledge and uh, give me a tailored answer Another example that you might have, let's say that you have, a, that you're selling some stuff. You have a, a store and you have, you're selling books, for instance. 
you have uh, a lot of books here or have other products and uh, you know you, you add it to your cart cart like five products but you want to get this you, you want to get the specification between those products so here you can also again you can pass the products as a as a context to, to have uh, awareness of the, the context and passing those files the, the all the information about your product and let's say compare the product one against product two right and uh, I'll summarize the book num the, the book number one if you have a, let's say uh, a first page give me an overview of the book number one and the book num number two which one is for children uh, what's the, what's the price so I, I just I want to pay less than 20 select the, the, the books for me that are less that so you can have your assistant as well talking to your products in your in your store as well to try to, to help the user so those are a few scenarios that you can use AI in, in, on your website so here I'm going to ch switch a little bit for a different way of leverage AI as well so you can use that to improve accessibility Setcore Content Hub has a feature similar with that already that ex that if you do have set core content hub you probably have you can upload already the image there and that's going to extract the the tags of the image as well if you don't have that you can also implement yourself using azure connecting uh, a few technologies and uh, this way let's say you can use an uh, image uh, and then extract the the alt text and save in the on your set core uh, website so alternative text is very used it's used for screen readers uh, for accessibility as well so it's a very important thing it also uh, increases their like the hating in uh, search engines so you can you can use AI and connecting to try to improve accessibility of your site as well so you can also use AI for developers if you are a developer and you want to start leveraging AI well you can have github Copilot as well. GitHub Copilot helps you to develop. Of course, you can use ChatGPT and copy code there and paste there, but it's not the same thing. The thing is, again, I would say context awareness. So when you are developing your code and you have GitHub, GitHub Copilot connected to to your code, it's basically reading all through your code and giving and giving context awareness. To that and uh, this will and, and, and having this information is you already try to predict what you're trying to do and give you suggestions and try to to rewrite your code in a different way so I've been using uh, this for a few months and uh, it uh, helps give you great suggestions so this is a very I mean very specifically tailored for developers but you are a site core or maybe you're not a developer you're a marketer so if you're a marketer, how can you start leveraging AI on your daily so daily, daily activities? So this is a, a software, this is a, called AI Content Profile for Sitecore XP, which is developed by our friend here, Rodrigo Peplau. And uh, basically it is a PowerShell script that analyzes the content of your page and try to automatically assign the, the profile cards. So assigning profile cards is something I'll say boring and manual task that you have to do when you are you want to use this marketing tool for Sitecore. However, if it is AI tool, let's say you have 1,000 pages, uh, this can basically, you know, assign all the, the the profile cards for you. Let's say that you have a uh, let's say you have like a, a store, uh, like a sport, right? You have like a, a skydiving, hunting, fishing session, right? So the AI will go read through the content and you'll be able to identify uh, that this uh, this topic is, let's say, skydive, right? So and then you'll be able to automatically assign the, the, the cards for you. So this is a great tool for marketers that it is available already and uh, by the community. Well, maybe you're not a marketer, but you're a content author and uh, well, what can how can you leverage AI on your activities as well? Well, this this tool was created in the hackathon uh, by another group. We have here the the GitHub on the on the slide as well, and uh, this is another PowerShell script that you can use to to leverage AI. And uh, there are a few interesting things here. It's like a kit of AI with a few tools here. So 
first tool here, you can check and fix the spelling. So basically, it can go through all your all set core tree and uh, look, go page by page and uh, try to fix the spelling and check the spelling for you. And uh, if you have a thousand pages, that's great. You don't need to do manually. If, if you need that, if you need to create versions, you need to translate the website. Either you go manually one by one, create new versions and translating manually, field by field, or you can use like something like this as well that's gonna check your content and start to generate the translations for your website. Nowadays, I mean, you create one website and you want to have people from other countries be able to read that. We can create, of course, in English, but when you tailor to that specific language and now that you have AI, that's the, the translation in AI is really, really great. Even translate to very different languages uh, it is, it is like incredible the capability of the translation nowadays. So you can try to spin up a new version in a different language, let's say Czech uh, or German or French, and uh, try to to tailor your website to to those countries as well. And uh, well, we can we can also you know he, he writes the text and the content. Maybe you want to change a little bit or. Uh, Tune a little bit, so you, this capability of writing as well would help you a lot. So, coming soon, this is another tool created by our friend from the community, Rodrigo Perpilo. Another kind of PowerShell script, another tool that he's developing to, to use gen, generative AI. To, but in this, uh, this approach is a little bit different and it is to create the page for you already. It is to create the content for you. So this is, uh, uh, first congratulations for Drew for, for developing this. Uh, I know it's still, I would say, in beta, but uh, I mean, being able to create the page integrated directly to Sitecore, you know, instead of go to ChatGPT and say, ah, what do you want? I want this, this, and this, and you know, copy paste. Now you'll be able to, in the Sitecore tree, right click, insert new page, and uh, it's gonna open for you your rich text editor, and then you already can type within set core what you're looking for, and it's gonna generate for you. And uh, by talking about the content generation, uh, this image comes soon. I created that image using uh, ChatGPT, and uh, here's my prompt: generate an image with the text coming soon. So we, I mean, even to create an images now, we are using. Uh, I mean, we are using uh, generative AI, and uh, it's it is something to say. So here, I try to present you tools, uh, regardless your uh, approach or your uh, job we set for. Right? We have a lot of we have content authors, we have marketers, we have uh, developers, we have a, a lot of holes that involves the site core world, right? And uh, there is a tailored tool for each one of you. Uh, here, try, I try to present some tools that you can already use, and uh, probably in the near future, in the few months, you're gonna see much more tools coming. And uh, basically, everyone will be using AI. If you're not using, it's gonna matter of months before you, you get in contact with any tool for any role that you have in your organization and start leveraging AI for boost your productivity. So my final thoughts about this presentation would be that I, I saw that phrase and I think it fit our presentation here. And uh, well, the future of artificial intelligence is not about man versus machine, but rather man with machine. So everyone will be basically using AI in your daily activities to boost your productivity. You're gonna be using that for whatever role you have in, in the in the job market. So be prepared, try to find some new tools. And uh, well, that's it. Thank you very much. Here I have my link to my blog. You can contact me. We have also our GoHorse team, uh, our website, and uh, that's it. Thank you very much.